I reviewed over a hundred resumes this year and I kept finding the same errors time and time again. I'm sharing these mistakes with you so you can strengthen your resume today. The first one is the order of bullets underneath your position title. So your strongest bullet needs to be at the very top. You cannot have your strongest bullet at the bottom or in the middle. So you have a duty position, you have 10 bullets or five bullets or whatever you have. And then that strong bullet, the one that's quantified, the one that speaks to your achievement, for some reason it's in the middle or it's at the very end. Listen, not everyone's gonna read all of your bullets, okay? They probably won't even read half of them. They're gonna read the first or the second one, so you need to make sure the top three or the top four are the strongest. Your bullet should be organized on your resume in order of strength with the weakest one at the bottom. And speaking of that, you do not need 20 or 30 bullets for each position title. The human resource specialist is not reading your entire resume and you're taking up valuable space. Okay, second is the keywords from the job announcement, they're nowhere to be found in your resume. If you're applying to be an analyst, you need to have the word analyze somewhere in that resume. Otherwise, I don't know what you're doing. Same thing if you wanna be a trainer or an instructor and the verb training isn't anywhere in your resume, you're not speaking towards that job announcement. You need to make sure that you understand the job announcement, you understand the qualification section, the duty section, and you're pulling out those key words and you're using it. Now, if you're actually opening up the OPM job series handbook and you're looking through your job series and you're creating a resume based off of that, you are already gonna have a lot of those keywords in your resume. But people are still not doing this. I'm reviewing resumes for an individual that wants to be a security officer, but they, they don't show that they secured anything. The verb secured is nowhere in their resume. So pay attention to when you're applying. Do not just blindly apply to something thinking that you have a shot because oftentimes you are wasting your time. Now, talking about keywords, I put together a spreadsheet that has 25 of the most common jobs in this country with the five key verbs for that job series. That can help you start building your resume. I have that spreadsheet available for free. If you go down below, click the link in the description below, sign up for a free trial. You can download that Excel spreadsheet today. The third mistake is the bullets are weak. You know what I'm talking about. You are mentioning your responsibilities, what you were responsible for but you're not mentioning achievements. So you are responsible for this information system or this team or this group, but what did that group do? How did your leadership impact what that group did? We need to focus on actual achievements. What is setting you apart from all the other candidates? Nobody really cares about your duties. That's expected from any Tom, Joe, Harry, doesn't matter. Everyone is expected to accomplish their duties but how well did you do it? For example, let's take a look at how the company Tesla hires its engineers and lawyers. When Tesla is looking for AI engineers, they wanna know what exceptional work have you done. You see this little text box here? It's not a lot of space, but that's all you need. When Tesla's looking for lawyers, same thing. You see here, please send three to five bullets of exceptional ability. Now, ask yourself, when you are constructing your resume, are you putting three to five exceptional bullets underneath each position? Because that is a strategy that works. Now, of course, your federal resume needs to be comprehensive. It needs to explain exactly how you're qualified. This is because HR cannot assume anything. They cannot assume anything about your experience, so you have to spell it out. But always make sure the strongest is at the top. Another error is including the objective or the skills page in front. Nobody cares what your objective is. That page is trash. Skills, that's for a private sector resume, maybe. This is commonly done in the private sector where the first half of the page or the entire page will be an objective or a skill summary or something like that. This is usually unnecessary and it's working against you. Think about the HR specialist that has 200 or more resumes to review. Nobody is sitting there reading your objective statement. They're getting right to the good stuff. They're getting right into the first two or three bullets to see what type of candidate you are. Or they're using control F and they're searching for keywords throughout your resume. And with some agencies now restricting resumes to five or seven pages, you just can't afford to take up that valuable space. You've seen a movie trailer, right? 
A good movie trailer makes you want to watch the movie. It includes the exciting parts of the movie. Well, a good resume is just that. It makes you want to interview the candidate. And just like a movie trailer, you need to include some of the exciting stuff, which are the achievements. Now, if you're watching this and you think you have a strong resume, maybe you think you can't improve upon your resume in any type of way, but you're still wondering, why am I not getting interviewed? Why am I not even getting referred? Then I want to share a formula for success on usajobs.gov. And you can learn about it by watching this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.